All right, welcome to class one homework exercise for essentials for Photoshop through Arizona Highways Photoscapes. Uh, I'm Amy Horn and I'm just going to take you through the assigned homework <clears throat> in case that will simplify things for you. So you were given the um, file here which includes multiple different vegetables and fruits and your goal is to create some kind of potato person. <clears throat> I've asked that you use a minimum of five objects to create your person and to be as expressive as you want. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine. I encourage personal um, changes and preferences. So I'm just going to take you through how I would go about it in case um, I went too quick during the full lesson. So to begin with, I have this open in Photoshop and it's automatically defaulted as a background layer because that's the default of, of how things come in. I'm going to use a variety of selection tools and the idea is I want to isolate each item onto its own separate layer. So in uh, our previous class, I did cover several different layer, uh, lasso tools as well as other selection tools. I'm going to go ahead and stick with one of my favorite tools, which is the object selection tool, because I find that one is, is um, fantastic. Let's see, got a little extra marching ants on my screen that I just removed. So let's go ahead and choose that object selection tool. So first, I'm going to go ahead and start with the potato, which is the background grab it and automatically it goes to the selection. Once I have my marching ants, then it's as simple as a right click and I can do layer via copy. So that puts it on its own separate layer. I can even rename the layer. As I get more and more layers, it might make more sense to do that so I don't get lost in what things are. So I'm just gonna go potato. There we go. <clears throat> and now I'm ready to select on the next layer or select the next subject object. I'm going to start with a carrot for eyes. Notice as I come down onto the document, my mouse um, icon shows that it's, it's like cancel. I, I can't do this. And that is because I, I don't have an active layer selected. So if you notice over here, nothing is highlighted. If I click on my background layer, then I can come over and make my selection of my, um, with my object tool. Automatically, it goes straight to the carrot. I can right click, layer via copy. I don't see much right here. Part of that is because the cutout of the carrot is so tiny that it's hard to see the thumbnail, but it is indeed there. And just to prove it, I can grab my move tool and come over here and when you make a copy it's going to make it exactly on top of where it was so the copy of my carrot is just nested right on top if i bring it over here to put onto the potato the only problem is is the order of my layers so i've brought it over into the about the right positioning but if i can just change the order of my layers because the background layer is always at the bottom and we work our way up so if i just grab the potato and drag it down here it's going to be underneath my carrot eyes and I'm all set. Now, if I want a second carrot, I can go back just like the way I did, select my background layer, use the object selection tool, and then drag uh, layer via copy and then drag it over. But I can also make copies of layers very simply by just right clicking. So on this layer one, I'm going to actually rename it carrot, double click on the words, it's now named carrot. And then if I right click over that layer, I get the option to duplicate the layer. And then it says, hey, do you want to rename it while you're doing that? So I'm just, I'm going to be okay with carrot copy. So I'm just going to hit okay. And now I have two carrots. Again, I don't see two carrots because once you make a copy, it's exactly on top of the previous one. So with my move tool, I just drag it over. And now I have two carrot eyes. I can continue on with multiple other objects to create uh, the rest of the face. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create a few more things and then I'll come right back to you. So as you can see, I've made a few more layers. I have not yet renamed them. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that real quickly. This one is the chard. This is a mushroom. And this one's a cucumber. And so if I'm ready to cut out, let's say the pinto bean next, or actually let's do the blueberry. I have my object selection tool. I've selected the blueberry and I got an error. 
So as we read through this error, it can't find an object to select. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and then I'll explain why that is. Notice where my marching ants are, and hit OK to clear that. Marching ants were right over the blueberry. And if I look at my layers, anytime I get an error, the best thing is to look at what layer you're on, because generally that's where the problem comes from. So if I turn off, poke the eyeball in all these layers, that is all the computer could see when I selected my blueberry right here. So the computer couldn't find anything because I didn't have the right layer selected. So I'm just going to turn all these layers back on again. I'm going to click on the background layer, make sure that is selected and visible. Now with my object selection tool, I can select the blueberry and it finds it pretty good. I got a little extra there. So I'm going to actually go ahead and try the magic wand tool this time. Command or control D to deselect. And I can add to my selection by holding shift. Keep hitting shift until my marching ants are completely isolating the blueberry. <clears throat> A magnetic lasso tool would have worked very well or possibly the lasso tool as well. Now I'm gonna right click, layer via copy, and I have the blueberry. Okay, so now it's a matter of just assembling. And again, it's up to you how you wanna assemble it and what you wanna do. So I'm just gonna take you through a few different options. First thing, order the layers. I do wanna make sure the potato is at the bottom of my layers. So I'm just gonna drag it down to the bottom. I'm also going to turn off my background layer because I don't need to see anything that's on the original file right now, unless I wanna go back to it. So this way I kind of know what I have to move and what I can place around. So uh, grab my move tool. And there's um, one thing to know about the move tool. If you have up at the top left-hand corner in your move tool toolbar, uh, if auto select is, is identified and checked, then anytime you go to an object, it's gonna automatically select that layer. Notice how it went straight to the charred layer. So right now charred layer is selected, but if I just go over to the blueberry, it's gonna pick the blueberry, which is pretty handy. So a lot of cases, that's a really nice aspect, but sometimes if you have two layers very close to one another, the auto select doesn't work so well. So just recognize that that is there if you want to select the layer and then move things, or if you want it to auto select. I'm okay with auto select at this point, so I'll leave it this way for now. I'm ready for the blueberry to go on top of the carrot. However, I need to make sure the carrot is beneath the blueberry layer. So that way it can be, the blueberry can show up on top of the carrot. So I just change the order of the layers, drag my blueberry over, and that would look great if only the blueberry were smaller. So let's make it smaller. Command or control T for transform. Hold down the shift key to keep it in a locked ratio so that it doesn't get mis misshapen like it did just there. And when I have the right size, go ahead and hit my check mark to commit the changes. And then I'm back to my move tool and I can move it around. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move things around too, if that is better for you. So I've got one eyeball. I'm gonna go ahead and add another blueberry. Hopefully you remember I can right click and duplicate the layer. And then I'm just gonna drag it over. Okay, so I can add some chard, maybe make some um, hair off the sides or something. So I've got the char layer selected, but I'd like to rotate it around, move it some. So again, I'm gonna go back to my transform, controller command T. If I want to just orient, change the orientation, um, just spin it around. <clears throat> if I move outside of the square, notice how my mouse has turned to a double-sided arrows with a curve on it. So that allows me to just rotate it around. I can also right click to do any kind of free transforming, scaling, skewing, anything else or rotating and flipping as well. So all kinds of different options there. I'm just gonna do some fun little do like this. And then I'm gonna make two more copies of this. Right click, duplicate layer, hit okay, move it over. I'm gonna actually rotate it. So command or control T to transform. 
double click or hit your check mark to commit. And I'm going to make a few more copies of this real quick. So again, right click. Hit OK. Drag it. Do one more. Drag it. And this one I'm going to flip around the other direction. So I'm going to make sure I hit Commander Control T to transform. And then I'm going to flip horizontal. And maybe do a slight rotation as well. Double click or hit that check mark. So now I've got the hair set. If I wanted to get rid of part of the stem, I could even use my eraser tool to erase a little bit of that stem. So here's my eraser tool. If I want to zoom in so I can see a bit better, Command or Control Plus. And then I can use the space bar to move things over. So I have my um, eraser tool. If I want to make it bigger to erase more at one time, I can change the size by the toolbar up on top. I can also use a shortcut key, which is a bracket key, right bracket to make it bigger or left bracket to make it smaller. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger here just to get rid of some of that. So it's not quite as noticeable there. And then command minus, <clears throat> excuse me, command or control minus to make it smaller. So now it's just a matter of picking up the different pieces and creating the face the rest of the way that I want. And, um, and then you have your finished product. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up real quick and come right back to you. So I've taken a few more minutes and cut out a few more pieces from the original background file, adding the chili pepper for the mouth and the upside down broccoli for the nose. To finish up this assignment, once I'm happy with what I have, first off, I'm going to turn off the background layer. So that way, all I see is just the main, um, main potato person that I've created. If I decided I didn't want to use certain objects, I can go ahead and just um, click off those layers. So poke the eyeball on the layer of the mushroom. Same thing with my cucumber. And now they're not visible. So I can do one more step before saving if I would like. This is purely optional. You can crop down so that you only have the veggie, um, veggie face. So I'm going to grab my standard crop tool. Okay, so as I'm looking for the crop tool, notice last I used the perspective crop tool. So uh, that's what will be remaining active. So the more you kind of remember what the tools are or go straight to the shortcut key C and that would bring up the cropping tool. And then I can um, click and drag over the area that I really want to have cropped. There we go. And then I can, whoops, free transform as long as I um, clear my ratio up here on the top toolbar. So I'm gonna clear that ratio. And then I can change this. Let's see. Go ahead and accept to accept the changes. Uh, when you saw that black background, that was just a preview mode. So you could see what was in there, but that did not remain current or permanent uh, with the cropping tool. So what I see here, I have this grid in the background and the grid is considered transparent. So if we save as a JPEG or as a um, other types of files, but especially JPEG for this particular course, that will turn that grid into white, which is perfectly fine for what we're doing. So uh, again, optional to crop, but if you'd like to, to kind of practice using that cropping tool and clearing the ratio, it's not a bad idea. Our next step is to save. I recommend saving twice for every project that you create in Photoshop. The first time is you want to create it as a Photoshop file with all these layers. So you could go back to it and modify. Even though I have my cucumber and mushroom layer turned off, those selections will still remain as part of the layers with the file if I save it as a PSD file. TIFF works as well, but we'll just stick with PSD files. So if I go to file and save as, if I chose file and save, it would actually bring up save as automatically for me. And then the first thing you want to do is figure out where it's going to save. I like to save things on my desktop because they're easy to find. 
and especially if you're um, newer to using software like this and not sure where it's going to save on its own, save somewhere that you know, either create a file, a folder, or save to your desktop. Um, I'm fine with leaving the file name the same, but I do want to save the type differently. So first off, I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document. So it has all of the layers intact and it can be reopened this way. Hit save. And if you saw that bar real quick, it did go through and it said saving and now it's saved. And I see up here, here's the file name and the type. Lastly, I'm going to save it a second time and this time I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So when I want to submit photos to somebody else, files to someone else, and I want it universally um, interpreted and, and easy to, to see whether it's email or whatever attachment. Uh, so this one, I'm going to leave it as one veggies on the action. I'm going to rename it and say final potato person. And again, I'm saving to my desktop. I chose JPEG, hit save. And then uh, when it comes to image options, generally I'll go ahead and slide that quality up to the highest quality and hit okay. Now, if I minimize and or close Photoshop, I should be able to see on my desktop, here is my final potato person that I just saved. If I double click on it, it will open. And that would be the file that you will submit to the Dropbox folder. So I can double check that you didn't have any issues with layers and such. Okay. I hope this uh, video helped and um, don't forget to stop and pause as needed and or replay. Good luck.